Well, hello, hello. Welcome back to Bartley and Barnes. This is Jacob Bartley, your host, coming to you from Sacramento, California. I am joined by my co-host, co-host Keith Barnes. What's going on, Keith? What is up? I'm back. I'm here. Yeah, and we have a special guest today, Mr. Gio Ramos. Some of you might know him from the Apocalyflix YouTube channel. What's going on, Gio? Oh, the DC enthusiast is here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we're not talking comic books today. (laughs) No DC conversations unless Tarantino directs a DC movie. He's talking about doing Superman. Uh, That would be cool. I mean, he's talking about doing Star Trek, like, which is weird because you wouldn't think he would do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So... If he would do that, maybe he'd do I'd something love Superman. Superman movie. Awesome. Yeah, that would be interesting. I, I don't know. I'd want to see him do something more adult, maybe. I don't know. Hey, rated our Superman movie. <laughs> <laughs> Screw it. Um, well, if you haven't guessed it yet or seen the title of the video, we are talking straight Tarantino today. Um, usually we have several topics, but we're going to dedicate this whole episode to Tarantino. We are all three big Tarantino fans. Especially Keith, um, favorite director of all time? Question mark. Yes, it's between him and Scorsese, but I think I think so. I think I go with him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, definitely up there for me. Um, obviously, maybe number two or three, maybe number one. I mean, it's it can go either way depending on, um, you know, who, when you ask me. But yeah, we're just gonna talk about because Once Upon a Time on Hollywood is out. Mm-hmm. Perfect time to talk about this. We'll talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a little bit. Um, obviously, it's going to come up, but we're also going to we're going to talk about why we love Tarantino, yeah. and we're going to just rank, give each our individual um, Tarantino list as well. But Keith, let me just ask you: so when, when did you first see a Tarantino film, and how did like when did you realize how much you you love Tarantino? Well, oddly enough, we were just. Uh talking about it, but uh, my first Tarantino movie was actually Jackie Brown. You saw it before Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Wow. I remember, wow. The, I remember all the hype of Pulp Fiction. Interesting. Uh, at the time, I remember it was out, and I just, I was uh, 16, I think it was 15 or 16 when it came out, and I just never, just wasn't able to get to a theater to see it, of course, and then, uh, yeah, I just never, I saw all the stuff that tried to copy it, <laughs> so I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really aware of Reservoir Dogs cause, at all because uh, it was such a small kind of indie thing. Yeah. But uh, so I didn't know about that. But yeah, no. The first one I saw was Jackie Brown, and I remember trying to see Pulp Fiction before that, but I just didn't get a chance to. But when these came out, I remember uh, uh, when they came out on DVD. Uh, I bought the Jackie Brown one came out first. This is when his movies were first coming out on DVD, and. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I remember uh, I was going to see Jackie Brown. It came out a few months. I think it was December of 97. I just graduated high school earlier that year. Nobody wanted to see it. None of my friends wanted to see it. I was really excited about it. I thought it looked really good. Uh, Chris Tucker was all like in the trailer, the scene with Chris Tucker and stuff. And it was a lot of hype with him, like with money talks and then rush hours coming. So everybody was excited about it, but I couldn't talk anyone to going to see it, so I just didn't see it. And then when it came out um, to rent, I remember renting it and thinking, like, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> and nobody, I couldn't believe I didn't go to the theater to see it. That's why I started, that's why I, uh, I, now I start going to theaters, or going to see movies by myself. Because I'm like, you know what? Who never cares, gonna, right? Never yeah. let that happen again. Miss a movie because you yeah. can't find someone to go with? Screw yeah. it. That's like me with Midsommar. I went and watched Midsommar by myself. Yeah. It was great. Like, a great experience. The right. movie was all right. Right, right. <laughs> I couldn't believe I couldn't. <laughs> oh, exactly, yeah. Even if it's not that great. It's, it's just, a, I, yeah. it's therapeutic going to a movie. Right, it really is. It really is. And I'm so mad at myself for missing this movie in the theater. And yeah, man. Ever since then, it's been this has been one of my favorite movies uh, ever. Not just Tarantino movies, but yeah. Ever, but and uh, then I don't. FYI, I, I literally just finished <laughs> watching Jackie Brown like less than ten minutes, minutes ago. ago. Yeah, like, like <laughs> seven, eight minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, I had that was the only one I hadn't seen right. until now. Yeah, I did. From then on, when I said it came out on Blu, uh, so not Blu-ray, I put DVD. Uh, I bought the one you just watched. I. I bought that, and Pulp Fiction came out like two weeks later. Then I watched Pulp Fiction. I'm like, oh my god, where where has this been my whole life? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I dove deep. Into so when did you finally watch Reservoir Dogs? Right around I, that so time. Reservoir Re- Re- Dogs came out like two weeks after that. Okay. So I bought all three of the, the DVDs. Right. Wow, nice. And it it's been about a month, and I was like, where is who is this guy? Where has he been my whole life? And I just dove deep into Tarantino from then on. I've been full on fanboy. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so, Gio, what what was your experience with Tarantino just as a fan, movie fan? Like, do you remember watching any movies when you were younger? Or It didn't happen for me until somewhere between Kill Bill Volume 2 and Inglorious Bastards. Because that's when, you know, I was... Starting to get older. Right? Started, started to get yeah. older and, you know, uh, appreciate those kinds of movies. But growing up, I always heard references to Pulp yeah. Fiction yeah, exactly. all the time. And I'm just like... What is that? And I may have seen it, you know, before when I was like, I don't know, eight or nine years old, but I didn't, yeah. I wasn't like, you know, right. too into it, you know, during that time, that's when Star Wars uh, came out, you know, and so I, I was all about that and whatnot, but it was uh, really, um, it wasn't exactly like right when Kill Bill Volume 2, it was like somewhere in those years, like mm-hmm. 2007, 8, 9, where um, I finally saw Kill Bill Volume 1. And I was just like, this is pretty dope. You know, this is some good stuff. Very violent. Very violent um, movie. And then as I got older and, you know, uh, out of high school, you know, throughout the years, uh, going back and rewatching his movies and then having to compare his style of filmmaking with others and seeing the difference in his writing, his characters, his appreciation, especially for female characters, Jackie Brown, you know, and that kind of it bothered me how the controversy with Margot Robbie's yeah, character. Yeah, so stupid. Look at Kill Bill, <laughs> the Kill Bill franchise. Not only Uma Thurman, mm-hmm. but a bunch of strong female characters mm-hmm. in that, in those two movies. Right. So my Quentin Tarantino appreciation came later on, but it did happen. Right. For some people, it never happened. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, just uh, it's crazy now that that it's nine films in, and I wish I could go back to you know the mid 90s you know where i wasn't a kid like me myself Mm. and just be there to experience you know the the wow of reservoir of pulp of jackie you know all those films and he even wrote true romance right? wrote true romance natural born killer natural born killers yeah so 90s was a big big time breakout for tarantino i would have loved to have been there did he was he only in From Dust Till Dawn as acting and that's it? He and Rod, I believe they both wrote it. He, oh, okay. He and Rob Rodriguez. They're, 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 they're like it, really tight. And they, yeah, other than wrote. the fantastical elements, it feels like a Tarantino movie. It is. Up, up until... Until they, they turn into, into the, vampires. Right. Or all, all that stuff happens, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, that movie's crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> that I would like to see him do something like that. Like, I know. All his movies are set in reality for the most oh, part. Yeah. It's hyper realized yes. mm-hmm. reality, but I would love to see him do something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so for me, I had no. My parents let me watch anything. I don't know if they purposefully <laughs> were like, "Here, come and watch this," but like, they didn't make me leave the room when they put movies on. Mm. So I, I, as far as I can remember, like, I when did Reservoir Dogs come out? Ninety. It was ninety three, ninety two, okay. ninety one, ninety two, something like that. Yeah, so I was like, dude, I was watching Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction when I was like six, seven, eight years old. Like, no joke. I was watching those. Obviously, I didn't like really know what was going on. I just remember visuals, but then I would watch them when I was older. So I always knew about Tarantino, and then really, you know, once Kill Bill Volume 1 came out, I was like, forget how, what year was that? 2003. Okay, yeah, so I was... Yeah, I was like twelve or whatever, so I was old enough to under like understand movies at that point, and I just for a while, for a long time, the kill two Kill Bill movies were my favorite Tarantino movies. I still love them, but they're not. Neither of them are in the number one spot. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Um, but those just the action in those movies is freaking incredible, and a lot of people say that Tarantino he only does his kind of movies but his movies are so diverse they really are even though they have a certain tone and style that's dialogue wise you can tell it's him they're all very different mm-hmm. it's just look if you can compare any of them Jackie Brown to Kill Bill it's, it's way different Jackie Brown's like a a heist comedy in a way you know crime drama mm-hmm. heist comedy yeah. Kill Bill's a samurai a Assassin movie, Eventually. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, Django, Western, it's, yeah, all the westerns, yeah. and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is completely different from all those. 
and I don't even know how to categorize Pulp Fiction. That movie's just balls to the wall. It's crazy. That's a nineties movie. And it's like, it's crazy to me that I was able to see those movies that young because I really think it affected my movie fandom a lot. Because I'm nowadays I'm because I was watching like Goodfellas and things too, Casino as well, and oh, and now I. I'm a huge Tarantino fan, huge Scorsese fan, and because of watching right. it so young and all that stuff. So that's kind of my history with, with Tarantino. And then once I got older, um, I feel like he's matured so much as a filmmaker, even though his all his movies, most of his movies are great. Um, and none of them are bad. Yeah. His worst yeah. movie's still good, you know what I mean? Yeah. But... Because when I got older, I feel like as I was getting mature, more mature, his movies were maturing, and just the later ones are fantastic. So let's get into our rankings, man. Let's. Uh, so there's technically, there's technically ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's technically ten. Right. So but let's go. Good. Let's go bottom five. Right. Each and then top five each. Yeah. So let's start with you, Keith. Going from number ten up. All right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my number ten is the Hateful Eight. Uh, remember he how mad he got when uh, someone leaked uh, with the script? I think got leaked. Oh there, yeah, and then he said he wasn't he gonna wasn't make it. it. What? Yeah. I forgot about I that. I think it came out that it was Michael Madsen. <laughs> that, uh, really? Yeah. And yet he still managed to get a part in the movie. Right. Exactly. Yeah, well, I think I think they had a puncher. <laughs> I think they had a yeah right. I think they had a big old thing about it between two of them. They obviously settled it. Of course, and he's in he's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as well. So. Uh, that's his guy, so he's always going to, but uh, he's always going to be there. But uh, yeah, Hateful Eight is one of those w- where uh, uh, it's shot beautifully. The, 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 the it is. Oh man! Remember, we saw it at the Gio and I saw yeah. it at the Tower. Oh, yeah. Really? It was so, so and it was in the 70, uh, 70 millimeter. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they had the um, wait. Did all pic- showings have an intermission? Oh, I don't know. Ours had an intermission. The, really? yeah. yeah, it may have. Oh, but it was also extended too, so yeah, that's really probably good. why. Yeah. yeah, we had the Morricone uh, theme mm-hmm. playing in the beginning. Yeah, the which is the, man, the long, the long. We're, we're against long intros and, and titles in movies now, but this one's awesome. It's really, really good. Uh, the big sweeping uh, landscapes. Of Shot snow. by Deakins, right? Roger Deakins. What's it? I don't know. Uh, I gotta double check. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I know he likes to shoot a lot of his stuff himself as well, right. uh, Tarantino himself. But he shot. Death proof himself, uh, but yeah, it's a uh, this movie's tough. Like I said, it, it's it's it, it starts drags. off slow. <laughs> it drags. Once everyone gets into the the place, then it's like ooh, now you get to. It feels like a play. Yeah, that's what a lot of people describe it. Yeah, it play. really does. Because you're just, just in, you're second. literally just in that cabin the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But then you get the weird turn where you find it turns out that the people that are downstairs under. In the like basement area, Chan Tatum and yeah, so get that weird way. twist. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, then that's from then it kind of gets a little, uh, a little bizarre. From yeah, there yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really. Know. What's his name? It's not a. It's not terrible. It's no, just not at all. Not at all. It's compared just, to Tarantino standards, you yeah, know, it's yeah, it just, just felt like a. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, a lot of people love that Sam Jackson scene where he's describing what he did with the. Uh, the, the oh, Bruce guy. Dern's yeah, uh, his uh, son. son. I didn't really. I don't know. Tarantino mm-hmm. has a. Th- there's things that people criticize Tarantino about that I can sort of understand. And certainly, his session with uh, <laughs> number one feet, <laughs> which there's none of that. I don't think there's any of that in this movie. But certainly, uh, uh, the genitalia. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> it's like, well, why are you? Always, he does it. He did it. He did it in Django as well, which I'll get to. And I don't know. It's. It's a little bizarre. That's a bizarre scene. I didn't really like that much, but uh, but it's a, I think overall it's it's a pretty good movie. And the score, the score, like you said, is, is awesome. Oscar yeah, finally won an Oscar, yeah. which was weird. Or, yeah. 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 Uh, so anyway, yeah, number ten, number nine, I have a uh, Death Proof, with, which I actually like this movie a lot more. I was wa- I was watching it this morning, and like, man, this is really good. <laughs> this is really good. But uh, you know, it's the lesser Tarantino film for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, for most people, I think I, I like it more than most. But uh, Sydney Poitier's mm-hmm. daughter, or also named Sydney Poitier, uh, in it, mm-hmm. she's really good. Uh, I love the second half of it. It's one of the greatest car chases I think in yeah. all of movie history. 
um, the way the movie, the movie ends and the actual ending where they're all just kicking being the crap. In love, <laughs> I love, I love fem- that. Female power. Oh my goodness, yeah. I love that. That's really good. That's really good. But again, this is one of those things where I think a lot of the criticism with him is that not so much the female characters, but the way he actually sometimes the actresses themselves get kind of you know treated and sort of maybe the women as the way they're actually treated in the film. Because I was watching it and yeah, this is kind of a little bit. It's a little bit of the way they're portrayed. Yeah, yeah. like the way just and he's a, he's the guy's a psychopath. Kurt Russell plays this stuntman stunt Mike. Mike, which is one of his more memorable characters. Yes, in I was film. really hoping he was stuntman Mike in a uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right, I was really hoping he was he said his name and he was <laughs> stuntman Mike, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just what he does to the to the girls at the beginning, and you can even make that case even in this one that. A lot of violence towards his female, some of his female characters, mm. but at the same time, they get the revenge. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. a weird. I can see, like, I can see some of the criticism, and then right. yeah, like he does kind of give them their the, the the upper hand at the end. They're usually the last one standing. So uh, I don't know, but I, I like that proof. I think it's good, and that, that's a prime example. You see, like, there, it ends with the four mm-hmm. <laughs> beating the crap out of this dude. You know, yeah. probably killing him. So at what he deserved. Uh, number eight, I have Django Unchained. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's again. I I like this movie a lot, but it's just the end is what kind of got that dragged out Lord of the Rings ending where like okay, should have ended. People were saying that the house shootout should have been the that last should have been the ending. Right. Yeah. It should have been a, written a way where he gets his wife back. Uh, I, I love her in this movie too. Carrie Washington. Carrie Washington. She was really great. Um, but of course, DiCaprio. Everyone talks about that he's excellent in it, and of course, that scene, the improv scene where he cuts his hand, and that scene is insane. <laughs> and I can't believe that was all. Like, and it just, and it was just like, just keep going. Everybody was good enough to stay in the character and, and keep going. And it was, that scene is crazy. But uh, uh, Christoph Waltz, you know, uh, masterful in it as well. I think he uh, the second. No, he, he got nominated for this. Did he win? Or? Yeah, he won. Yeah, he won this one. Yeah. He won the other one. He didn't he won, win. Uh, he, he won, won both, in Glory right? and ba- Glorious Bastards so and... He won both. Yep, okay. He won oh, both. Wow, that's yeah. right. Okay. Well, there you go. So, uh, yeah. And I thought Jamie Foxx was really good. I know he... I think for he wanted Will Smith. Uh, I would have loved it. Yep. Us. It was yeah. supposed to be Will Smith. Yeah. And Something Will Smith some wanted of... his character to be the one who kills Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm. Which I, and that's I all it was. I, that's And then... I can understand. He didn't want Christoph Waltz to be the one to kill him, but... I, can I mean, it, I, for, I understand Tarantino's point of view too. He's like, I'm not going to change my story oh, sure. just no, because definitely. you want it. No, you know absolutely. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah but that would, I mean, Demi Fox was great, but really that would have been interesting I to see Will Smith. Been, yeah, yeah. Because he was a guy that was holding his wife, so why not? Like, it's supposed to be a revenge. And a movie. Tarantino movie too. Yeah, you know, and this is another, it's, it's a revenge western. It's definitely, you know, fits that. Obviously, the, the, his love of those old spaghetti westerns, those Sergio Leone westerns are in this. And a couple more movies we'll get to later, but anyway, I got that at number seven, and then number six to round out my bottom five is once upon, I got once upon a time in Hollywood. Uh, nice. It's still fresh, but like I said when we did our discussion, I got it just outside of that top five for me, mm-hmm. which are the 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 uh, the, 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 the one, those my top five are like the great ones. I think once upon a time in Hollywood is just outside of that, but I still really love the movie a lot. I think mean, it's I, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I got awesome. that at number six. All right, Gio, what's your uh, 10 through 6? Okay, number 10, I have Death Proof. And, you know, like I, like I said earlier, you know, it's a, it's a good movie, Stuntman Mike, you know, but I don't know. I, I just don't think that there was a, enough going on, you know, like the characters other than Stuntman and maybe yeah. one or two weren't just as interesting as, enough, you know. I'll say, if you love, I would say about it, if you love Tarantino dialogue, this it's the perfect uh perfect for that mm-hmm. you know if that's enough to grab you so it's, it's enough for me but like, I, 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 I totally get it like yeah. I'm watching it this morning like eh, nothing's happening right. <laughs> for like the first 45 minutes right, right? They're, they're so just, they're just, just talking everyone's just talking out a bar you right know? It's just that's like, all it is but to me I, I enjoy it I'm in there I'm engaged with them it's right. like I'm in there with them but I, I definitely understand yeah number 9 The Hateful Eight um, hmm. dialogue can only carry you so much yeah you know yeah. Um, and, and there's a there's a lot to keep track of um, and I just, I don't, I don't know. It was just, I was bored. 
Yeah. <laughs> there were times when I was bored. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and you don't get that way with a Tarantino movie. I know. I know. But what what puts the uh, uh, this one above uh, Death Proof is uh, you know Sam Jackson. It's some say it's his best performance since Pulp Fiction. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, also Walton Goggins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, I love him. Yeah. He, he, he was, was great in it. Yeah. 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 Um, and then of course Kurt Russell. You know, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Jennifer Jason Leigh. You know, strong cast, mm-hmm. um, strong performances, but and score and cinematography is great. Yeah. But coming off of Django, it was just like it was where Django was complete violence, shootout, gore. This one was just like, sorry, somebody fucking shoot somebody. Please. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta keep nailing the door shut every time somebody open the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta nail it, Doug. You gotta get the nail. We're in the, right God there. God damn it, right this there. again. Come on. <laughs> uh, number eight, I have Jackie Brown. Now, full disclosure, it's been about a long time since I've seen Jackie Brown. You also just watched the last 30 minutes, I too. just saw it again. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, um, I, it just, you know, as far as, like, the Tarantino from 92 to 2009, you know, I find that as, like, the, the lesser of, you know so many great films in his filmography yeah. directorial efforts and whatnot don't get me wrong it's a good movie you know Sam Jackson is stand out um, I like the whole double crossing uh, aspect that goes on with it um, I totally forgot Michael Keaton was in this fucking movie he was coming <laughs> off of a uh, what was he doing there in that time uh, he did Batman Returns in 92 and then oh. there was something else that he did I don't know yeah. it was, he maybe slowed down a little bit um in the mid 90s but um and it also um a couple oscar nominations maybe some snubs as well Mm -hmm. but robert forrester and what's her name the the lead lead actress what's her name yeah she she got a uh, oscar nomination as well no she didn't no she She should have she She got some golden globe nominations she got golden globe nominations maybe that's what i'm thinking of yeah yeah which at that time i'm sure golden globes were bigger than how they are now right (laughs) maybe slightly so that's number eight. Number seven is Reservoir Dogs. I mean, great movie, great accomplishment given what oh my gosh. you know I had to work with. I'm sorry. You know what? I skipped that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I also have that seven. Let's talk about it real quick. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So totally wait, so that. you just skipped it completely? <laughs> I did. I went from Django and I went straight to Once Upon a Time. I oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. It's Interesting. Well, I was sorry. like, damn, you have one? <laughs> oh, Reservoir Dogs sorry. that high? Yeah, no, I, I also have it at seven. Yeah. All right, so good. Yeah, Mr. Blue, Mr. Pink, the code names. Yes. The opening scene with the diner about, you know, waitresses oh, yeah, and tipping. Yeah, that's tipping. The be- I think that's the best part of the movie, Dude, in my, my opinion. That is one of the more stronger dialogues yes. between characters. Yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> Steve Buscemi and. Um, Harvey Cattell. Harvey Cattell, who's uh, the movie made. He, he, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves the script so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the whole device plan, and and then again, it's non-conventional storytelling. Yeah. It goes, it jumps forward, then it goes backward, yeah. and, and that's a lot of Tarantino. You know how he's uh, direction. He says he writes them that way too. People are thinking they do it in editing. He says no, that's how I wrote it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I mean, uh, uh, it's it, some things don't hold up over time, like Tim. Tim Roth bleed, <laughs> bleeds out like he should have been dead. <laughs> exactly, and it's a little bit, a little bit overacting right. too. With yeah, that yeah, too. yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, it's it's good. It works. But Harvey Cattell, uh, Steve Buscemi, Tarantino, Star, do you write to save money? Mr. Brown, that's too close to Mr. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Madsen, you know, yeah. they they have cool. all they all got great, movie, great, yeah. great chemistry. Yeah. Get great, great chemistry uh, together, yeah. and then of course. The dance sequence with Michael Madsen. Yes, you know, <laughs> guy's ear and dances yeah. ear off. Oh, and Tim Roth is telling the story mm-hmm. when he's got to sell himself as yeah. uh, being this guy. He's got to tell that story about. Uh, oh man, that's he's got to like. I love to see characters acting right. in the, like they're in character and acting and they're acting like they're acting. Like, I love right, seeing right, that. Yeah. He yeah, really yeah. he sells it. Really yeah, well, yeah. Well, when he's he trying to job. explain it to yeah. the guy, he's just, and then the guy's reactions. <laughs> he's just gonna decide to turn on us all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, just uh, it's it's an accomplishment given you know the the budget and you know it was a very much uh, yeah. he had to prove himself you know and mm-hmm. he had one shot to do it and I think he we can both all three of us agree that he hit on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, number six, I have Kill Bill Volume Two. 
Um, not as strong as the first one. Granted, they're kind of this one movie all together, so it's 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 interesting to, to like how, yeah. how you judge this movie, you know. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I just found the first volume to have the more fascinating characters, the more you know, hmm. incredible fight sequences, you know. Whereas you know, in volume two, it's it's a lot more recalling, you know, of her a more age. backstory, and backstory two. and and whatnot, you know. Yeah. And uh, I wanted more out of that fight between her and uh, the lady who could have killed her in her sleep. Uh, uh, the blonde lady, yeah, yeah. Played her, played by uh, Daryl Hannah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And um, she's the one with the eye patch, right? Yeah. 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 Little uh, doing more of that. That was a pretty epic fight. Yeah, it was. Uh, not really. Uh, I'm, oh, I, I guess I mean right. like I guess I mean like swords, right? I see what you mean. Okay, you want greatest, to be yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she's like she's yeah, I love the, that. the greatest swords swordsman. Oh, because right. they're like fighting just they're, well, in the they're trailer. In a trailer, this they're small, like yeah, it's right. small, like hand to hand combat, and then, right? And they're like you throwing stuff at each other mm-hmm. and stuff. Or, they got no, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, right. Grabs her fucking eyes. Grabs her eyes. Yeah. Well, overall, it's just, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you should include it as one film, but, I mean, if, if I, I... I would argue if anybody that did. Cause um, I, I, I said I wouldn't argue if someone did. I, I, I thought about it myself, but I think they're both slightly different. I yeah, in number five, I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hmm. I feel like this movie will continue to grow on me. It may, may very well climb up the list, but, you know, from what we talked about earlier, you know, the performances are very strong. I love the setting. Yeah. I love the... Uh, <clears throat> the whole misdirection and, you know, twist, if you want to call it, you know, um, reminds me of Inglorious Bastards, you know, mm-hmm. the, taking a real life event and, you know, making a <laughs> twist on it, you know, yeah, for, sure. for You said number versus. five? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going 10 through six and then, and then five through one. Oh, well. But we're good. Did we you got go five two? We got Geo's oh. number five. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all good, all good, all good. Um, all right, so granted, some of these movies, it's been a long time since I've seen. Yeah. And for, like, Death Proof, I've only seen it once. Mm-hmm. So Death Proof, I have at number 10. I remember enjoying it. It's It kind of feels like a ep- TV episode. Like sure. A, I don't, maybe like, if you ever watch Black Mirror or anything like that, just like a, mm-hmm. both that, of these, Planet Terror. Planet Which Terror and like that. TV it just kind of feels like they're both each like anthology episodes of, of a TV series or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. it's entertaining. It's very obviously super hyper violent. But for me, I always like was kind of just I don't know. Doesn't her um, when she has her leg out and then yeah. they get in the accident he, and her he, he ran gets and like just flies off. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's so gross. gross but um, they show like different angles of what happened to each of them. Yeah. yeah, I was always just like, "Wow, Tarantino directed this. Interesting." I, I just remember feeling that way about it. Well, again, if you watch it again, it just again, if you just watch it, just listen to the dialogue. Yeah, it's. it's I'm gonna. Fully, yeah. like, I want to okay, revisit it. I want to revisit it for sure. You own it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'll let you it. Yeah. Um, and then number nine, I have Hateful Eight. Um, mm-hmm. Similar, like coming off of Inglorious and Django, which are great um and you obviously don't have Django that as high as most people do uh i was just expecting hateful eight to be amazing we were so excited about it we went to the tower which is a, a, this old school theater in sacramento for those of you who don't know and i was just a little let down by it it was that well you were talking about his editor and all that stuff that's where you really felt it yeah. for the first time yeah um, you didn't really feel it too much in Django, yeah. but you did really feel it in this movie. And it, this one could have been shorter. And even regardless, I mean, we don't have to make excuses. It's not great. It's just not great. <laughs> um, but then that's where it kind of ends. The rest of these movies are really, really good to masterpieces mm-hmm. from here on up. Um, at, at number eight, I have Reservoir Dogs. Um, I enjoy Reservoir Dogs. I've seen it a couple times first time when I was really young and it just kind of um, it's, he created his he started his Tarantinoisms with his first movie and the you know the the shootout at the end and pretty much everybody dies if almost everybody dies if I'm remembering correctly um, so yeah that Reservoir Dogs is awesome except for Buscemi 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, all these movies are really, really, really good to great. So you guys might question some of my next couple uh, rankings, but at number, so I have ten, nine, eight. At number seven, I have Pulp Fiction. Mm. Um, I I think Pulp Fiction is a great movie. Mm. I just I don't think as highly of it as everybody mm. okay. as everybody else does. It's it's fantastic. Like it, honestly, it's a classic. It is, and I think even though it's not that old, it, no, it, is. it can be. It's, a, it's a classic. Yeah, to me, Logan like Logan's a classic, even though it came out like three years ago. <laughs> I'm just saying, just it's gonna be, you yeah. know. Um, but I'm, all respect to Pulp Fiction. Have it's you amazing. Seen it? Have you seen it in a while? Um, I've watched, yeah, we'll see this Pulp Fiction and Kill the Kill Bill movies, I've seen them like 10 times, okay. you know? Okay. So I've, I've seen Pulp Fiction a lot. It's been a few years, yeah, but yeah, it's but not so like it's been 12 it years or something yeah. like that, you know? You've seen it a bunch of times. Oh yeah, yeah. That's um, right. and iconic scenes, moments, everything, Bruce Willis is awesome in it. It's just, I just find myself enjoying the rest of this list even more yeah. and even surprisingly Jackie Brown even though I just watched Jackie Brown and I have it above full fiction. And to me, it's because <laughs> there's a reason. All right, so I love this about Tarantino, but his stuff is very exaggerated and exaggerated versions of what would happen if it was actually real. And that Pulp Fiction is all throughout the whole movie. It's crazy. Yeah. Jackie Brown feels more grounded to me. It feels like... Even though it does feel like a Tarantino movie, it feels realistic. Yeah. Like, very realistic. And the reason why I have it this high, I had it under Pulp Fiction at first, but Sam Jackson. Maybe the best performance I've ever seen him give. Gio, you gotta rewatch it and see him from beginning to end in that movie. Yeah. He just... He carries so much... He should have been nominated for an Oscar. Sure. He was better than the guy who did get nominated for an Oscar in this movie. Just the way he talks to everybody, the way he talks to Bowman at the beginning of the movie, and just everything. And he's he's very, like, um, dangerous and a criminal, and he's like, you don't mess with him, right? But he's also very vulnerable, too. He, I love the scene when him and Jackie Brown meet in the bar, and then she's like, she starts telling him that she told the cops about everything. He's like, what? what? You told him that? Yeah. It's like, what you tell him that for? Like, just the way... She's and like, it's so, the truth, isn't it? And it's like, he basically (laughs) just, exactly, and she basically just ratted on him and told him everything, obviously in a big plan to, she's tricking him into thinking that it's part of all the plan and everything, and and he's like, I don't know, this seems kind of fishy, she just gave you out to the feds, it seems kind of fishy, and it's so weird, he goes from, oh, if you cross him, he's going to kill you, to um, those vulnerable moments, you know, Which which is crazy to me. And then, um, yeah, so that's my, yeah, my 10 through 6. Yep. So Death Proof, Hateful cool. Eight, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and Jackie Brown. Cool. All right. So we're going to do a top five then. Yep. Uh, my number five is Pulp Fiction. Uh, I mean, and yes, I'm glad it's on the list. Well, top five. Well, listen, it's one of those, like I said, from here on, like my top five are like, any of these could be number one mm. uh, Pulp Fiction I'm sure there were points in time where Pulp Fiction was my number one until these other ones came out <laughs> except for my number one but uh, no I, Pulp Fiction is this, this movie that kind of uh, even though Reservoir Dogs came before it it seems like a lot of critics and a lot of people actually seem to like Reservoir Dogs more a lot of people that I think that we all probably listen to but um Pulp Fiction is the one, man. It, it, like I said, I, I, I saw it after I saw Jackie Brown, but it was like, I just remember being like, man, this is like, what is this? Like, this, right. this movie is... Well, it's definitely his most famous brilliant. film. It, it, for I, sure. it, it definitely yeah. is. And it's, and it's one of those, it's so iconic, and so many people have tried to copy it in, in different ways, and we've seen parodies of it, and or parodies of certain scenes, obviously, the Royale's cheese and all this. It's so quotable. It's probably his most quotable movie mm-hmm. that he's done. Um, you know, get medieval on you or whatever, all that stuff that <laughs> became part of our, you know, pop culture, uh, like uh, language and uh, stuff. Uh, 
you know, Ezekiel 25, 17, there, but, you know, all, the, every, all of it, all of it. You know, just, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, and, and such a great ending, and there's so many different, there's so many little things in it that you don't pick up. Like, you can actually, you know, in the beginning of the movie where uh, Tim Roth and uh, Amanda Plummer are plotting, they first decide, are oh, we going to rob this restaurant? Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch that again, you can actually see John Travolta in the background walking to the bathroom. You know, he gets up and goes to the bathroom. He's like, you know what? I gotta go take a, uh, I gotta go take a piss. Uh, and figure out what's good because him and Sam Dax were arguing over, uh, you know, the way the way that same thing, the nonlinear storytelling yeah, yeah, of yeah, it, yeah. which is really great. And you get, you get back to the end of the movie, and it all it all comes together. And I, I really enjoyed it. I really love it. I love Bruce Willis in it. Like you said, uh, is this kind of washed up boxer, but he, you know. Throws this fight. He's supposed to throw this fight, but he doesn't. He bets on himself, and he wins. And he's mm -hmm. got to, he's got to leave town. But then uh, the one guy that's threatening him, he has to save him, you know. And I, I love that whole story there uh, with Bing Rains and stuff. You know, it's pretty brutal what happens to him. Mm -hmm. But people think it's this super violent movie. A lot of this stuff happens other than that scene, which you only see for a second. But other violence happens off camera, yeah. You know, or just off frame, or it happens like you, you don't really actually see it, right? But it just. It has just this rep, rep for being this super violent film, but most of it is implied. You don't actually actually see a lot of violence in it, but it's still. I, I love Pulp Fiction. I love Uma Thurman. In it, or Uma Thurman mm -hmm. in it uh, was on the set of that film. They came up with uh, Kill Bill. Idea Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what her and Tarantino did? Yeah, 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 yeah. So her character in Pulp Fiction was a, an actress, right? Supposed to be a failed mm -hmm. actress. She said she she did a pilot. Remember she talked about she did a pilot for a TV show called Fox Force Five, and about these five female assassins, <laughs> and that's what the character in Kill Bill are supposed to be. Then like, really, she describes each one, and if you listen to her the way she describes them, it's all the characters in Kill Bill. Wow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. Yeah. 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 See, because all these movies kind of exist kind of in the same universe. You know, uh, there's a so we're watching uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just to kind of divert a little bit. Uh, there's an ad right in the mid credits that uh, DiCaprio's character does an ad for Red Apple Red cigarettes. Red Apple cigarettes, yeah. That's his cigarette brand in all of his movies. Yeah. All Tarantino's books. Oh, movies. really? But yeah. it's not a real cigarette. No, brand. it's not real. He just yeah. made it up. But it's dude. He loves having all actors characters smoke all cigarettes. Smoke. Exactly. All of them. All characters smoke. It's just they're so just much. always smoking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're always Red Apple cigarettes. You'll see, like in Kill Bill, when she's getting off the plane when she first arrives in Tokyo. And she's on the little moving walkway. You'll see a poster for Red Apple That's cigarettes cool. in the background. That's yeah. really cool. And when Bruce Willis walks into the bar in Pulp Fiction, he's like, "Yeah, hey, give me a pack of Red Apples." And that gets, mm -hmm. yeah. So I love the way all just little stuff like that. That you know, that's it's little minor details, but oh, it's yeah. what a filmmaker like him like that stuff's important. And you know, yes, sir. And uh, you know, he's brilliant the way he ties all that stuff in. And if you're a stu student enough, you can catch it. You know. Uh, so anyway, Pulp Fiction though is my number five. Uh, number four, I have Inglorious Bastards. And Glorious Bastards was number one for a very long time. Uh, I actually really debated. You had it uh, over Jackie Brown at one point? For a while I did. Yeah, I would kind of go back and forth between them. That's crazy. I went you seem so sure about Jackie oh, Brown. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It, was, it was between, It was. they were one and two. Like They would kind of flip-flop depending on which one I just last watched. <laughs> you know. But uh, I, I love Glorious Bastards, man. It's, it's, mm. it's one of the people applauded in the theater when I, at the end with the at the very last scene when he says uh, you know what this just might be my masterpiece and a lot of people think that was Tarantino saying that yeah <laughs> to the audience but uh, you know a lot of people don't like it because of the it, uh, I was listening to uh, you guys the cinephiles of John the mm -hmm. podcast but yes. their episode on, on this they made a lot of good points about it where it's like is this movie is it trying to be serious or is it being kind of a it's like, like a parody. Well, not parody, but just it, he's telling. Obviously, it's it's historical fiction, right? The way it turns out. But then it's like, well, is he trying to be serious though? Because there's real stuff like that happened. But I don't know. It's just the way he tells the story. It's like there's a lot of stuff gets really silly. There's certain parts that kind of get a little silly. Well, it, and over the top. You think like, but he's saying like, are is it offensive that he's taking this serious subject matter and kind of. Joking about it a little it. bit, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of people. I, I could kind of. I was like, yeah. Like, I'm not I think Jewish. It's fine. But, it's it's fiction. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's I, the movies. We should be able to 
handle it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's not so much that. And yeah, that's definitely you're right. But um, I just I don't know. Sometimes I, yeah, I just think about it. And I wonder. Well, is he trying to be? Uh, I, I don't know. Like, what is this movie trying to be? Like, or is it trying to be a serious kind of telling of, of the story, or is it just? Is it this, this crazy revenge movie, or is it, I don't know, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. But I really like Melanie Laurent. That's the female lead, right? Yeah, she, she's awesome in, in yeah. this movie, man. I, I'd like to see more of her in, with, in, with some of his work. Uh, French French actress, of course. And she was really, I loved her story, and I wish we kind of got a little more of that, of hers. Uh, but then again, another criticism I hear about is it's not enough about the actual bastards themselves going, going around doing their missions. Right. Uh, which I could definitely understand, but this movie was really it's Christoph Waltz mm. took this movie, man. This was like his, his first it's U.S. movie, right? Out, yeah. yeah, man. He, oh my god, <laughs> the opening scene is one of the best openings. Oh, it's incredible oh, in history it's of so cinema. Tense, yeah, it's yes. Oh man, so tense. It is. I'll, I'll just put this on and just watch that. <laughs> you know, watch that opening scene, and then the the bar scene in the middle where they have to go. Oh. Michael Fassbender. <laughs> yes. Three. Yeah. And then the it, Nazi looks at him. Like, I know. And you can and even when you know what's gonna happen, you see that scene, you see the guy react and you're like, Yeah. Ugh. Even the bastard's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna make it out of yep. this. Yep. And I, I love that scene. So yeah, I got that at number four in Gorgeous Bastards. And then at number three is Kill Bill Volume One. Uh, like I said, I debated with splitting it up. Um, but they are I think they are slightly different. Volume one is certainly like you said, more uh, the actual uh, action. Mm-hmm end of it, it movie starts right away with boom fight with her and the uh, the fox oh my god it was in a brutal fight scene mm. and just smashing each other around with household stuff best you bit know, of the fox she's ever done like I said yeah exactly like I said he knows how to draw mm-hmm. these performances out of right. all his actors yeah. and the, yeah and uh yeah crazy opening scene uh very disturbing scene with, with her in the hospital with uh mm. Buck that yeah. guy Buck that, oh Jesus Seriously? But yeah. I really hope that's not a thing that really happens. Uh, it might be. Uh, that's another <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Yeah. whatever. But, uh, yeah, and of course the awesome kind of anime telling of uh, Lucy Liu's character. Yeah, Gimmel, her character. That is a lot is of death. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, I was blown away. I said that you like, wow. Uh, I, uh, who would ever think to do that? Like, to take a character and like make it an anime In the middle section. of a live action. In the middle, yeah. Too. Just, it's like, <laughs> Japanese manga. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like so a flashback, good. and change to a different medium. Yeah, than a flashback. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's really it's it's awesome, and then of course the big fight with the uh, her uh, the crazy eighty eights and all these Akuda <laughs> at the end, which is that, so violent they had to cut it to black and white. <laughs> three different levels. Uh, uh, yeah, and fighting all the henchmen. Go 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 go. Yeah, the, fight with go go. The, the chain that ball blade thing. Yeah, and Lucy Liu, and Lucy Liu was uh, an awesome fight as well. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love it. And the big kind of bombshell at the end that Bill reveals the daughter's still alive. Uh, and, you know, six months before Volume 2, which I had at number two on my list, Kill Bill yeah. Volume 2. Uh, I love that because you get more backstory into The Bride. Yeah. Um, and this one's a little more dialogue-driven than Volume 1. And you actually get to see Bill, of course, played by the uh, late David Carradine, Carradine uh, who I thought was great. Perfect cast. Supposed to be Warren Beatty for a long time. And he actually suggested David Carradine uh, for it, and uh, he's great. He probably should have been nominated for his role. Um, so I thought he was awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah. I really thought he was really, really good. Um, I love the middle part where he's telling the, the, the you get the flashback what she, what she's buried into the coffin, and he t- the way he sets that, that up. I tell love that, story. that. I love the way he sets that up, and uh, that whole flashback of how he she was trained by Pai Mei. Uh, who was a character that character Wait, so actually, volume two your number three I have volume two I have number two okay. volume one number three I have volume okay, two okay okay at number two yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah sorry um, but yeah I love the way that I just love the way that whole story is told and the end the ending fight you know uh, or well confrontation yeah because it wasn't much of a yeah, fight no 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 <laughs> with uh, Bill but it was so well done they actually just you know, you know what no we're going to sit and talk and they sat and talked and explained themselves the why they did what they yeah. did and then it's like, no, nah, you know, no, we're gonna do this. And then, you know, yeah, she does the thing that was, it was set up earlier in the movie, and it was so well done. I, I, I loved it. And it's the way they both tie together. I always watch them both together. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I got it at number two. 
Uh, and of course, number one, uh, I have a Jackie a Jackie Brown at number one. Jimmy. Uh, so yeah. why is Jackie Brown so special to you? Jackie like, Brown is why my number one. What about it? It. <coughs> you, uh, it's so based special. on based on a book uh, called Rum Punch. That was the name of the. They called the mission uh, a job. They were calling it Rum Punch. That was their code word for it. Uh, you were asking about some of the differences. Jackie Brown is actually is a, a white woman. Oh, named, really? In a book named uh, by Elmore Leonard. Uh, her name is Jackie Burke. Oh, oh and huh. uh, yeah, the character is, it's a, it's similar though. Everything else is kind of similar. She's kind of middle aged. I think she's slightly younger. Oh, yeah, uh, in the book. Okay, but, interesting. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, <clears throat> but the decision to cast Pam Greer is brilliant because it's almost we had not seen no one seen Pam Greer in years. Like she was a famous black exploitation actress in the seventies. Yeah, it, it heard it had been like she pop up in little bit parts here and there, right. but only just to show. Kind of nostalgic. Hey, it's Pam Greer's in this part of this movie. Barbara Streisand. Yeah, right. Barbara exactly. Yeah. yeah, this was her first time her getting a real part in a yeah. movie. Like, and she was amazing in it. And it parallels her story in the film where she's she's a black woman, a middle aged, holding on to this the last kind of job that she can get in this airline industry. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got a history of, you know, I guess her she took uh, her husband took the fall for some uh, I don't know some kind of crime. That they were committing smuggling, whatever. It's just, amazing, it's just uh, it was a robbery. Yeah, so I like love that. that scene when when Sam Jackson goes to kill her. It the right. drugs on, and she and he wait. keeps turning on the light yeah. off the lights. Yeah, and then they're in the dark, and you hear the gun you hear click. The gun click. He's like, "What is that?" He's like, "What do you think it is?" Yeah, yeah it's I love so it. good. Yeah, and she's like, "Get your hands from around my throat," and she then like, turn around. And she put the, she's got the gun exactly. pointed at her. Yeah, she, she she's got full control. Tells him exactly and how it's going to be. Yes, what's and that's go when down. you start seeing him be, be a little bit vulnerable. Right, exactly, exactly. And he, you know, he and knows. he's kind of even though. Yes, because she could shoot him and kill him. But right. also, he's kind of his pride's kind of hurt that he got bested yep. by her. By her, you know. You know? Yeah. And she does a great, she does such a great mm-hmm. job of portraying herself as this victim. But she's the smartest person in the room. The interrogation. She outsmarts everyone. Oh, she film. plays everyone. And dude. but and again, but except like she even said at the end of the movie, she Robert Fisher, uh, she didn't lie. Him, yeah. yeah, she said I never lied to you. I didn't lie. Well, and I think part of that is because he's the only like really good guy right. I guess you could say out of counts. all the characters exactly. you know and she, I think she notices that right. Mm-hmm. Right. she's like yeah I'm gonna get this guy involved mm-hmm. but I don't wanna screw him over right. you know exactly exactly and yeah. I love the way and and you know just the way she plays Sam Jackson's character and the, the feds against each other mm-hmm. to get something out of it for, for, for herself that she thinks she deserves yes mm-hmm. she's stealing money but you know <laughs> whatever like, and they keep saying throughout the movie money. keep saying throughout the movie like Money belongs to nobody. Right. It's dirty money. It won't, be, it won't even be missed. You know? Exactly. But I love Robert Forster's say, line. Uh, five or half million dollars will always, always be missed. Be missed yeah, yeah. I love that. But yeah, this movie is it's the, just about a perfect it's movie. It's so to good, me. dude. It's going to grow. With, I just yeah. watched it and I already love it. It's going to grow with time for me. Definitely, for sure. definitely. One of the best heist movies ever. I love the soundtrack. I love all the performances in it. They're yeah. great. And uh, yeah, I, I really sure. I, I love Jackie. It's <laughs> awesome. my number one. All right, Gio, uh, five through one. Well, four through one. Oh, yeah, four through one. <laughs> All right, number four is Django Unchained, or as Walton Goggins says, <laughs> Django. Django. <laughs> Decided. Decided. Man, dude, talk about just a c- incredible performances all around. But Jamie Foxx, he just owns owns the role of uh, Django, yeah. you know. And this movie... It's a very disturbing movie. Make no mistake yeah, about it. It's right. a very disturbing movie. A lot of, uh, you know, explicit language, in the N word, and oh, yeah. a, a lot of, a lot of graphic violence. I mean, the scene with the dogs, you know, and they chew up the the Boy, guy. Boy, that's tough to watch. Yeah. Just and well, when, just the fight when he's having the two characters fight. He gives him the hammer. Oh yeah, and fit, yeah. Oh, God, I remember cool. watching it in theaters, and, and that was a real thing that happened. The opening scene where where they're walking in chains, and you can yeah. hear it, and you yourself can kind of feel it. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Like, that's Tarantino brilliance, you yeah. know? And then, of course, Christoph Waltz as the dentist, the bounty Dr. hunter. King Schultz. King so Schultz. So awesome in this movie. Yeah. It, I mean, you thought you had seen the best of him from Inglorious Bastards, and then he just yeah. delivers this. Well, they make him the, just, one of the heroes in this right. in this story. One of the heroes, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, um, but for every graphic, violent, disturbing image, um, there is uh, a moment for, 
for um, you know the the black characters to to you know rise above it you mm-hmm. know whether it's you know in the beginning them removing the shackles and all the blankets and then yeah. going to <coughs> beat up on the guy mm-hmm. or Django having a whip and just fucking going at it to one of the uh, brothers yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. On, on, <laughs> Don Johnson talk about a, oh. a small role <laughs> Jonah Hill as well Jonah, Jonah Hill, Hill as well yes this movie when there's levity it's yeah. there and yeah. it's great man <laughs> One of the stronger uh, Tarantino movies at number four on my list. And number three is Inglourious Bastards. A lot of the reasons that you mentioned. Um, Melanie Laurent and just how she's able to, you know, again, Tarantino, female character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting the getting the, uh, the proud moment of the film. Mm-hmm. You know, burning down the whole theater with all the, the Nazis. Um, and then you got... Brad Pitt, Lieutenant Aldo, yeah. you know, and just his character and how he plays it so well. The Bastards. Mm-hmm. And how... Dude, the f- there's an argument to be made now that you mentioned that at least half of his films or more mm-hmm. have a female lead. Yeah. If you look at it, if you look... All right, Death Proof, I mean, the females are... The women are prominent characters in it, right? I protagonists. Mean, they're the protagonists, right? Mm-hmm. Hateful Eight, if it's Jennifer Jason Lee, is she the lead? the film she's the I mean arguably the main attack exactly uh, Pulp Fiction no but Uma Thurman's a sh- big character in the movie yeah Jackie Brown mm-hmm. obviously Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 mm-hmm. and then Glorious Bastards I mean she is the main protagonist in the movie yeah the, Melanie yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. she's so, the one uh, who has to put up with Daniel Bruce. so at least five of his movies are female protagonists yeah. main people, female yeah. protagonists yeah and I, I loved it. I mean, I, I get the criticism and the confusion and whatnot, yeah. but it, it it made an otherwise disturbing... I mean, it had disturbing elements in there, but it was more entertaining, you know? We know the story of World War II, the Nazis, the Germans, and whatnot, but this was just a entertaining Tarantino-like twist on it, you know, yeah. pretty much giving the middle finger to the Nazis, you know? So I that's number three for me. Number two, Kill Bill Volume 1, again. Talk about female action heroes and like swords, you know, and just incredible fight choreography. The whole, the world building and mm-hmm. just the mythology and everything involved yes. in that. It's yeah. it's so cool. The pussy way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, just how the film goes into each character, each uh, bad guy or antagonist as they're looking down on her, you know, and just takes you into their, you know, world and whatnot, and, yeah. you know, so that way when Beatrix does find them and fight them, there's emotion, there's right. weight behind it, right, right, behind right. these fight sequences. Um, so, yeah, I just thought, you know, great, great action movie. Maybe one of the best of the 2000s, honestly. Sure. Yeah. So that's my number two, and my number one, I can't believe you guys had this so low on your list, but Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction, I'm a, I am was late to this movie, I discovered it. It is the Tarantino film, yeah. I mean, in the past few years, that. and on, and so for me, I grew up watching a lot of Bruce Willis, John Travolta, mm. you know, and, and Samuel L. Jackson, and then to sit down one day and actually watch this movie storytelling and just all of them like it was it was John Travolta's re, uh, resurgence in his career you mm-hmm. know he hadn't been doing this and this got him uh, face off get shorty and all the other movies you know and Samuel Jackson you know I mean the guy from Jurassic Park you know <laughs> and is yeah. uh, eating you know is is all of a sudden delivering these you know crazy intense you yeah. know gospel lines before he kills him you know I just love the storytelling um, all the way through. I love the setting, the the music. I mean, the the dance between Uma Thurman and John Travolta. You get John Travolta dancing yeah. in the '90s again. I would have loved to have been there in those audiences, experiencing that for the first time. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have like Bruce Willis, you know, playing such a sort of an unusual character you know like a, a boxer who's just on the run you right. know and 
I'll never forget the pawn shop scene where he's going through each weapon and he upgrades every time. He yeah. <laughs> goes from the bat to like the the sword, the hammer, the, hammer, the, the sword, sword, the chainsaw. The chainsaw. He sees the sword. He's like, oh yeah, the yeah. sword. Yeah, the sword he does. Blast. He does see the sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pulp Fiction, I can watch that movie so many times. I just, I love the storytelling. I love the characters. I love the humor in that movie too. Like mm-hmm. Travolta and uh, Samuel Jackson, they're just so great together. Um, so that's my number one. Can't blame me for that. Yeah. That's the yeah, like I said, it is the Tarantino film. <laughs> All right, I'll make my mine quick, really quick. So I, after a lot of thinking, I have number five. I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I just, I I feel like even though I've said I'm somewhat disappointed, not disappointed, but it's not as good as I thought it was gonna be. Um, I still I feel like this movie was made for me. It's just, mm-hmm. it's has actors I really love. It's a Tarantino film. This, the setting and what it's, it's in Hollywood. I just love the the way it's formatted. So I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at number five. I have Kill Bill Volume Volume Two at number four. Um, not you know one and two are pretty close as far as quality wise goes. Mm-hmm. I just I connect with number one more. I it's more memorable for me, and I always. I always enjoyed it more. So, I but Kill Bill Volume Two is yeah. awesome. It's it's incredible. You get, you do get a lot more of that story and background and more of that mythology I was talking about with their League of Assassins or whatever it is. It's it's awesome. And then at number three, I have Django Unchained. This movie is it's just freaking awesome. And of course, you have. DiCaprio in this as well, which a lot of people thought he should have been not, at least nominated for supporting. Christoph Waltz was one for supporting. Mm-hmm. He was kind of a lead in this movie. He had almost basically the same amount of screen time as Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Um, but like Django again is another movie where, like in Glorious Bastards, where they're kind of taking a real life historical um, time, time and not making fun of it, but just showing the rise exactly of, like, it's of it's sound. different you know and then uh so yeah i love Django. and at number two i have kill bill volume one i me and my brother watched this movie so many times just over and over again and we freaking loved it and it's just it's so memorable and so freaking violent and bloody it's awesome and again the, it's volume one right where she wakes up from the in the hospital yep. and the freaking toe thing her toes so toe. like oh yeah, it's, yeah. I, like I'm kind of <laughs> grossed out by feet to be honest and oh I was saying in Jackie Brown when uh, what's her name has her foot up on the coffee table and it's That's, right next yeah, to Robert right. De Niro's yeah, drink and he's like right. what the hell and right. he grabs it I'm like yeah. Ugh, it's so <laughs> gross yeah. um, but I don't know if you guys knew this or would have printed it but I'm mean, number one is Inglorious Bastards mm. I freaking love this movie so much first of all it's just entertaining as hell yeah. but also I'm a history buff I like I'm an English major but if I wasn't in, majoring in English I would major in history I love history yeah. I love World War II I mean it's a disturbing time in history but I'm just saying I'm fascinated by World War II yeah. and it's just and the whole Hitler thing and I think it's okay to take what we know and here's a, a, a reimagined version of that kind of like sort of kind of did with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood even though yeah. that's not the main plot Yeah. but I just love this movie from Christoph Waltz from uh, I forget the the lead's name the, the woman uh, Melanie Lawrence yeah Melanie she's Lawrence. amazing in this movie yeah. Brad Pitt is amazing in this movie he's so good um, I think Sam Levine's in it yeah, <laughs> yeah the he's guy he's yeah. on the Schmodown a lot yeah. and he was in Freaks and Geeks yeah. um, he's in it so you are uh, I love the Glorious the Bastards bears. so yeah. much, and it's weird because I saw the Glorious Bastards late. I saw it at home oh, okay. one day. I was just like, I haven't seen this one yet, and I popped it on. And yeah. in, as soon as it was done, I said, "This is my favorite Tarantino movie." Yeah. Right after it was done, so that's how you know um, how impactful it was for me. But yeah, man, I'm that. That's it. That's our rankings. I'm any shockers on any of our lists, you guys, or Pulp Fiction. How low it is. I, that's all I mean, for I, me, I love it. I love it too. I, love it too. I really do, but I just I don't like it as much as most people do. Mm-hmm. I think I do. Mm-hmm. I just the ones I have above it, I just I just love a little bit more. 
That's all it is. You know. Yeah. But I love I love Pulp Fiction. It's a brilliant movie. That uh, you know you get little stuff out of it every time I watch it. Even now I've seen it a million times. And it's, yeah, I can sit and watch it like it's the first time. So would you say Tarantino's your favorite director? Yeah, I think so. I think he is. I, I think I like more of his movies. I know I mentioned Scorsese earlier, but I think I like more of Tarantino's films. He's done fewer. Scorsese's obviously been around since the seventies, but <clears throat> there's actually a couple of Scorsese movies I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, so I've never seen Game of Comedy. I've seen Silence. Uh, I still haven't watched Silence. Yeah, I know. It's a long movie. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, yeah. that's stuff I heard about it, but uh, <laughs> no. Nah, but Tarantino. Yeah, uh, yeah, just have it on. Uh, yeah, I think Tarantino. And he's one of those. Like, He's, he's like a like people call him the rock star director. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's one of those. Yeah, we mentioned it during our discussion earlier. Like him and uh, he might be my favorite director too, because like I, like, I love David Fincher. Fincher, is, Fincher one. is, I say he's my favorite director, and I he's one of mine. He just well, there's yeah. let Tarantino has more films that I love though. I yeah. love more of Tarantino's films than I do Fincher, Fincher films. Yeah. But the thing is, Fincher there's some Fincher films that are my absolute favorites of all time. So yeah. it's tough, but I'll. Tarantino's in my top three, any, always, all yeah. time. Uh, what What about you? Do you, where would you rank Tarantino on your all time favorite director list? I mean, he's on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to put it. Uh, Mount he's, Rushmore. He's, he's, he's on, definitely he's on, on my the, Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. I mean, how how could he not be? You know, uh, and yeah. Venture, one of my favorite movies of all time, Social Network. Yeah, for me, it's Gone Girl. Hello, yeah. Gone Girl, Girl for me. Yeah, is, I, I love that one. And Seven. 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 Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> and we just that. think that. All right, well there you go. Tarantino made a love letter to Hollywood. We this was our love letter to Tarantino. <laughs> yes. uh, this Bartley and Barnes episode. I kind of like this focusing on one topic. You know, I mean, we, of course we're going to talk more about other stuff in the future. But um, this was kind of a special episode. Uh, next time we meet, we're going to talk about the Big, Big Little Lies season Big finale. Lies. We'll, we'll talk about the Comic Con stuff too. It came out. We didn't get to that, but we want to do Tarantino. So yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, stuff too. yeah, exactly. But thank you for joining us, Gio. Hey, we'll have you happy. back for sure. Because yeah, right. we're going to talk different stuff. So this was just Tarantino, but we'll have you back to talk some more. Yeah. Alright, thank you all for listening. Subscribe if you have not. We will see you all next time.